Welcome to another tech tip. Today we focus on the use of a float with the Pentec drive. This can be a safety or used as a run command. To begin the first question is what power supply are you planning on using? The onboard 24 volts supply? That is an option, but we only have 20 milliamps to work with and if you have connected another device that uses the onboard power supply you will not be able to do so. As well, it is recommended to use a DC dedicated float. An alternative is to purchase a separate 24 DC voltage power supply, but that is not necessary. As the input is only looking for voltage. Be it DC or AC. Connecting an AC float can use a standard float, but depending on power supply you may need to involve an electrician for assistance. It is important to ensure you have the correct float to meet the desired effect or need of the system. A normally closed switch will pass voltage when in the down position. And open when upright stopping or removing the voltage. This is common in a fill function for example a storage tank. Or do you need a normally open float, often used as a safety? Meaning as you are boosting water pressure from a cistern or water tank should the water level be low it would turn the pump off. This is also set up as a run command. The difference? Remember any input set up as an external fault will be a hard stop requiring the drive to be physically reset. A run enable command will automatically start the pump when voltage is present. No need to reset the drive. Let's talk a minute about what the inputs are and can do. First, they are a digital signal. Either there is power or no power present. Next, what do we want the IntelliDrive to do when it sees the voltage? The drive could run, fault, or maintain a different pressure. In this case, we want to run or fault depending on the system design. First thing for a DC setup using the onboard power supply is to locate the onboard power supply and the inputs of the IntelliDrive. They are highlighted here in the illustration. Here we see the connections using the 24 volts onboard supply. It is important to remember the onboard power supply can only run one accessory. The diagram on the left shows one of the float wires going into and input left. A jumper wire runs from input right to V or voltage negative. The remaining wire of the float switch then connects to V plus or voltage positive. Now remember wiring the float does not mean we are done. The inputs will need to be programmed and will be covered momentarily. This is a close-up of the connections. It is also important to note which input the wires are connected to as there are two. Programming the input is specific to the input used to ensure proper operation. Now let's assume that the onboard power is not available. We still have at least one of the inputs open highlighted here. But now we are using AC voltage. Remember the input is looking for voltage only be it 115 or 230 volts. Or as previously discussed DC. Now could you use an external 24 volt power supply? Yes, and I would defer to the manufacturer of the power supply for instructions to connect to the drive. But AC is readily available, more importantly travels well. So, if we need to go a distance from the drive to connect the float AC current might be better. Here you see the line drawing from the manual that illustrates the switch connection. The right is a photo of the connection. The float typically will have two color wire, in this case we see white and black. I am also using a standard 10 foot replacement ungrounded appliance cord. I connected the white wire from the float to the white wire of the cord. The two black wires are then connected to input 1 or 2 whichever is available and or that you prefer. Once the drive is wired connect the other end to the power supply. Now remember we are not done, it is time to program the drive. Let's review again what the inputs are and can do. First, they are a digital signal. Either there is power or no power present. Next, what do we want the IntelliDrive to do when it sees the voltage? 
the drive could run, fault, or maintain a different pressure. Remember an external fault is a hard stop and must be reset manually. A run command will automatically run once the condition is corrected. For example, a cistern that is low the float would break connection of the current and the drive would not run until the cistern is filled and the float connection is closed passing voltage once more. To program the drive the first thing you may have to do is unlock the drive. Pressing the password key four zeros will appear. The code as noted in the owner's manual and assuming the password has not been changed is four sevens and press enter. Once unlocked scroll down using the arrow keys to I slash O. Then press enter. Now what input did you connect the float to? If you need to scroll, again use the up and down arrow keys to change the menu. Once you have the input highlighted you are using press enter. This will bring you into the input programming. You will notice it will first say unused. Press enter and then using the arrow keys scroll to highlight either run or external fault. Whichever you choose but remember if it is not critical to stop or fault the pump but rather just start once the condition is corrected then use the run command. Press enter to save the selection. Press the status key to quickly exit to the main screen. Now you are ready to test the operation on the system. Open a valve to start the drawdown of pressure slowly. We want to go slow and change the position of the float. For a run command, the unit will not fault, but in the down position, the points open the drive will stop and read zero amps. Lifting the float, the points will close and the drive will energize the pump and run. With the external fault setting, the drive should fault when the points of the float switch closes. Repeat this several times to ensure the float triggers as needed. Once satisfied the float triggers as needed mount the float and if possible, test the function of the system. This may not be possible, for example a cistern set up. It would be impractical to do so. So, explain to the owner of the drive the functions and ask that they monitor the system and call should there be any issues. And with that congratulations you have programmed and installed the float switch accessory. For more information, please refer to the owner's manual. Thank you and see you next tech tip.